Fans can't wait to see our next guest take on Leon Edwards for the UFC welterweight title. He joins us now to give us a little update on the fight, bringing chaos to the 170 division and the UFC in general. The one, the only, Colby Covington. Welcome back to Submission Radio, man. Thanks for having me back, boys. I, I always love talking to you guys about business and uh, future aspiring plans. So it's a, it's an honor to that you guys give me a platform and, and a place to share my voice. Thank you guys for never canceling me and sticking by me through the beginning all the way to the end. Now we're about to get our world title. Always a pleasure, man. Thanks for being good to us over the years. Super good to us. One of the most loyal guests uh, on the show. And I was saying to you a second ago, vintage Colby. You got the MAGA hat. You got Trump everything. What's uh, what, what's this beautiful blue made out of? This beautiful blue is made out of the finest silks you could find. You know, Trump hand made this this beautiful, you know, jumpsuit. And, uh, you know, I got a rocket for the Trump Palm Beach. You know, I, I go up there and I see President Trump play some golf with him, go by the pro shop, make rounds at, at some of his beautiful properties that he has in Florida. And, you know, it's the time of the season. It's almost primaries come up, coming up. So I got to show my support. I've been loyal and supported President Trump from the beginning, and I'll, and I'll do it to the end. I've lost relationships, friendships, sponsors have tried to come after me and drop me in the company because I supported him. And it's not fair. You know, that should be, you know, it should be a, a two sided uh, coin. It shouldn't just be, oh, we're going to shove this woke idea down your throat and you have to accept that. No, there's two sides to it. I believe and constitutional rights. I believe in all the freedoms that we were given, and I believe in President Trump. So God bless him and what he's done, the work he's done to save America and put America first again. He's coming back, and he's going to make America great again in 2024. There you go, man. See him at the fights, always there watching the fights. All right, lay it on us, man. There's so many rumors about this Leon fight. Give us the update. What's going on with this fight, man? Oh, yeah. And you already know President Trump gave his word. He was speaking at his turning point event last weekend. He can't wait to come out to the fight. So he'll be at the title fight, surely. And what the word is, you heard the boss man this morning, guys. You heard what Dana White said in his interview. He said, hey, it's looking like this is going to go to the Garden. And let's Mm -hmm. talk about why it deserves to go to the Garden. Because first off, not only is Colby Chaos Covington fourth highest gate in the history of Madison Square Garden, it's just facts. I'm up there above Rolling Stones. Muhammad Ali, Hulkamani, all these great figures. And here I am, Colby Chaos coming to fourth highest grade. I bring the electric factory every time I come to fight. So it makes sense that this goes to the Mecca. And guys, let's talk about it. Everybody keeps saying 30th anniversary. You know, they put it on the gloves. 30th anniversary. Mm. It's a big deal for the company. And I love this company so much. I'm a company man. I love UFC. It's such an honor to fight for UFC. So let's do the biggest and best business we can do in the Mecca, the heart. Madison Square Garden. New York City is Trump country. It is Colby Covington country. This fight needs to go to Madison Square Garden. We all know why. John Jones is unreliable. Come on, let's be honest. The guy could fail his steroid test. He could beat his wife again, end up in jail. He could do all these different things. Wasn't he the first guy that ever got a whole entire event canceled for him because of the picogram issue? Oh, you're asking us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that, that happened. Yeah. We were also in 200 as well. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Imagine us doing our first international event, UFC 200. Ah, oh, gee willikers, we're going to see John Jones and Daniel Cormier. That, yeah. Happen. Not only that, we were sitting on the floor outside uh, MGM Grand. They didn't invite us to the press conference, Colby. And then we snuck in because I guess we weren't important enough as the other media were. And uh, we found out that way. That was, uh, <laughs> that was an experience. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Thank you, slow internet, that we're still uh, still working. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I, I got to ask that. So, sorry to cut in there, Dennis. What what happened with Abu Dhabi? Because those were the rumors. It was either going to be UFC 294 or 295. I feel like 295 was the one that made sense. But what what happened with UFC 294? And, and how was it ever really going to potentially be there? No, it was that was never in the plans. You know, I know that's what Leon Scott said. He was like, oh, I want to fight in Abu Dhabi. That fight demographically never made sense to go to Abu Dhabi. They already had Makachev that was going to be headlining there because that's mm. his region and that's where, you know, his people are from. So, you know, that there was never a plan to be on that card. That was I don't know why he was saying that. The, the original plan, he, we're supposed to be fighting this weekend in London. We're supposed to be giving the London fans a spectacle, a pay-per-view main event. This was supposed to be flipped from a UFC fight night on ESPN to a pay-per-view event to show good faith to the UK fans because they're such – 
good fans. The UK fans, I can't say enough about their energy, their just enthusiasm for the sport of mixed martial arts and UFC in general. So this fight was supposed to be in the UK. Leon robbed the UK fans. He hates his fans. He doesn't even care about his fans. But that's why I'm going to get the undisputed title, and I'm going to go defend my title in the UK for those electric fans that I love so much. But, yeah, that was the original pin is London. So and then after that fell apart, it only made sense that this was going to go down somewhere in America, you know, the biggest market in the world. And it just so happens, you know, it's the 30th anniversary show for the UFC. It's going to Madison Square Garden, New York City. It's the Mecca. Everybody knows that's the most iconic arena. Everybody knows the history I've done there already. Fourth highest gate in arena history. Like That's facts. I do good business. And it's just it's going to be great. Trump's going to come out. It's just going to be a spectacle. Everybody loves us there. So. It only makes sense. Let's go there. And guys, who doesn't want to see me on stage with John Jones? <laughs> guys, mm. guys, you know the questions I'm going to ask? I'm going to ask him the questions that all the people want answered. What is a picogram, Johnny? Hey, Johnny, who were the two girls that were in the back of your Bentley when you wrecked it in Vegas <laughs> around that, that pole? I want the tough questions, guys. Hey, Johnny, what was in the bag when you hit the pregnant lady at the stoplight and you fled from the scene? Guys. It's going to be freaking electric factory if you put me and him on the same stage. I mean, Leon can't hang on the same stage as me for that long. So you might as well have me and John on the same stage. And we know he's unreliable. So that's another, you know, that's two reasons why. So let's get this done. Let's go to Madison Square Garden, boys. What do you think? Dude, well, I can't wait for this. This is unbelievable. What a crazy card. And I can't wait for this fight with you and Leon to actually be confirmed. Hey, I got to ask, like, what have you heard from Leon's side of things as to what's actually going on with him? Um, have you, do you know what kind of injuries he's dealing with or why the long layoff? Or have you had a chance at all to speak to him behind the scenes via social media? Or has he reached out to you at all? Has there been any contact whatsoever? <laughs> uh, Leon Edwards says her hand, Scott. I mean, he knows who daddy is. He knows that he has to prepare for chaos, guys. So he knows he needs a full like year training camp. But the thing is, guys, it doesn't matter what Leon Scott does. This is destiny. This is the history of 1776 coming back. There's nothing he can do to stop it. He can train wrestling. He can train jujitsu. He can train his striking. It doesn't matter. He's not going to stop the Colby train. And guys, deep down, he knows that. That's why he's delaying this. That's why he's pushing it as far back as he can possibly get. But now he's at the point, guys, where he's going to get stripped. So if he doesn't show up and fight before years end, he, I mean, he's got to get stripped. Like, the division has to go on. And, and he doesn't draw for this division. So it's not like the division is going to miss anything if, if he relinquishes the belt. But, you know, no matter what, there's going to be a big undisputed welterweight title fight before years end. And I think Leon's going to show up and he's going to, He's going to have to face the roses and, you know, he's going to take his ass beaten and he's going to be go back into irrelevancy because he's irrelevant without a belt. That's the only thing that makes him even somewhat like, OK, I might listen to what he says. Otherwise, the guy has no charisma. A wet mop in the corner of my house has more charisma than Leon Scott. So the guy can't draw, flies the shit. He's boring, unoriginal. He's going to come take his ass whooping soon. And I think it's going to happen in Madison Square Garden. You heard Dana, guys, the boss man. He said it. Love you, Dana. Love you, UFC. How how close is it to sort of being official UFC 295? From the outside, it definitely feels like, you know, an announcement is not that far away. Fr from your side, what has the UFC been saying? And what have, what have they been saying to you as far as like, you know, the plans and, and why this has been constantly getting delayed? Because like you said, you were expecting this to happen in London. So it's been quite a long time of i imagine dialogue and discussion and oh maybe we'll do this no actually we'll do that oh maybe we'll do this instead oh and it's like we've kind of ended up in this phenomenal scenario of like hey ufc 295 but what have they been telling you yeah and and i feel bad for the guys of the uk fighting on the fight night this weekend you know tom Aspinall doesn't need to be uh robbed of the clout he could have got he could have been a co-main event to Colby Chaos Covington on a major pay-per-view. Now he has to be a main event of a fight night. Like no one's even interested in that fight anymore. So I feel bad that guys like Tom Ospinall and all the UK fighters got robbed of getting the Colby Covington rub because everybody knows when I walk into a building, it's electric. People are on their feet. They're chanting Colby, Colby. So, you know, I, I want to apologize to the guy, the fighters that are fighting this weekend in the UK. You know, best of luck to you guys. I hope you guys have a great uh, fight this weekend. But I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry that Leon couldn't show up and couldn't get this undisputed spectacle going in, in, and for the home crowd of the UK, because you guys deserve it. You guys are amazing. You guys have a great weekend. And, and, and sorry, I apologize to the fighters. Well, I know they'll be looking forward to seeing you if you do get that belt and if you fight over there, they'd appreciate it. I was going to ask, man, initially, this whole week's been a bit of a roller coaster because at the start of the week, we saw Islam Markachev call out Leon Edwards to fight in that October card. I wonder, like, what was your initial reaction when you actually saw that tweet going live and across all the channels? Yeah, I was just I was laughing. It, it just looked like a desperation play. It looks like Islam's uh, afraid to defend his title against Charles. So that's kind of what it looked like to me. It looked like he didn't like what he was getting. And, you know, he was crying. He was crying and kicking and pouting to the UFC. Obviously, we know that that wasn't Islam that was tweeting. That was that that rat, that scumbag Ali Abdullah Sleaze. So, you know, that's just Ali getting him, trying to get some hype around his fighter. That, that was never the plan. It was never going to happen. It was never discussed. But let's be honest. Now that he's talking that, oh, you know, he's having his manager tweet from his account, you know, like he might have to come up someday. Like now you're talking a big game, you know. There's already one fraud at 155 that got exposed, Dustin Poirier. You know, we were supposed to fight. We were lined up. That's why this been taking forever for me to get back in the octagon, but he's a pussy. He's scared. He talked a big game. I'm going to come to 170. I'm going to do this. Oh, it's on site when I see you, Colby. Oh, blah, blah, blah. But then when it was time to sign contract, he was afraid. So same goes for Makachev. Keep that same energy. You keep acting like you want to come up to daddy's division, Colby Chaos coming to his division. Then you're going to get smacked in the face and you're going to get sent to your little daddy, Khabib, and you're going to have to have him come out. And he ain't going to do shit about it either. And he knows that deep down inside. So I can't wait to get my undisputed welterweight title soon. And boys, it's going to be big business, electrifying business. Every time we show up, you know what we bring to the table. Mm, that's, and I guess that's the thing, right? Because um, we spoke to Javier Mendez a few times, and it's definitely on the cards for Islam to move up to welterweight. It's just a matter of time. I wonder, like, he might actually be your first title defense um, if you beat Leon and get this undisputed belt. How do you think uh, Islam would do at 170, especially if he matches up with you uh, first? Um, when you have that belt. Oh, my gosh. Did you see what he, what that little Australian midget almost did to him? He had it melted. That's a little 45-pound midget. That's a little shrimp that I put on the Barbie over in Australia. You know, a little barbecue. Put a little fucking uh, little shrimp on the Barbie. So, I mean, that little shrimp took him five rounds and had him beat. Like, he needs to worry about defending his title and beating that little 45-pounder. You come up to a real man's division like welterweight, these are fucking the best of the best. This is the toughest division in the entire world because this is what most of the people in the world walk around at. This is around the weight, 170, 180 pounds. So, you know, he, I, I love it, boys. I mean, if you look at the storylines, you know, you got the USA versus Russia angle. I think the fight sells. It's a big fight. You know, it's not a competitive fight. You know, I, 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 I win it going away. I, I beat him pillar to post. He can't hang with me in wrestling. He definitely can't strike with me. I, I trained the last guy that knocked him out in another southpaw that I trained to prepare for that fight. So, you know, it's just it's an easy fight. You know, it's a Rocky Four story. Uh, Rocky versus Drago. Let's get it off. He wants his business. Yeah. Oh, man, he's in for a rude awakening, boys. I will say that's a big fight, you know, so that's an exciting one. We'll see what happens. Hey, you mentioned Dustin. I just want to quickly get your thoughts because I don't know if anyone's asked you this yet. What do you make of this BMF title being back on the line and him fighting Justin Gaethje soon around the corner? Um, you know, good for the UFC. You know, I'm a company, man. I love this company. So if that's, you know, what they needed to put on the line to, to run a pay-per-view main event, then that's OK. You know, those guys obviously aren't getting anywhere near an undisputed title. So, you know, those guys, those guys run away from the challenges. You know, that's just. You know, yeah, they fight exciting. They put themselves out there. They're not winners. You know, they just they fight exciting. So let them get locked in. Let's see what happens. But, you know, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not expecting. I think it's going to I think it's going to tank. It's not going to end up being as hyped about as they're trying to talk about it. But no interest could care less, dude. Two jobbers. Gotcha. Well, something I'm definitely interested in and I'm super excited for is UFC 295. Where are you guys going to be watching it? As you know, our good friends at Fanzo, the best app to find the best venues in your area, the best pubs with the best offers showing the fights. Not only that, they give you all the information. Are they showing the prelims? How many screens? Is there a beer garden? Outdoor area? Do they play the commentary? 
Fanzo shows you everything. It's your best friend and it's absolutely free. And not only does Fanzo help all you guys find the perfect venue to watch live sports, recently they have launched the Asahi Check-In Challenge in the lead up to the highly anticipated Rugby World Cup in France to create the ultimate experience For you, the sports and rugby fans, simply by checking in at participating venues, you unlock some awesome prizes to be claimed when you visit. All you got to do is download the Fanzo app, head to the Asahi Rugby World Cup 2023 homepage, check in at your local participating venue and go into the draw for a chance to win one of two trips to the Rugby World Cup France 2023 final. Imagine that, eating croissants and watching the Rugby World Cup. But that's not all. And this is one of the best parts. You'll instantly win a free 300ml Asahi Super Dry while stocks last. Man, I love Asahi. Use the link in the bio to download the app and start checking it. It is literally that easy. See you in France, guys. Uh, But Colby, just getting back to you, man. Dude, I've got to get your thoughts. While we're sort of talking about uh, the division and everything, what was your thoughts on this whole thing with like Kamara Usman and Hamza Shemaev, where it looked like Those two guys were going to fight. They showed a lot of interest. And then ultimately, they couldn't find the right weight division. And that fight fell apart. And I ask this because obviously, like, had one of those guys, uh, you know, have they fought? And if one of those guys emerged victorious, if you go in there and beat Leon Edwards, there's a good chance those guys would have been maybe one of your first title defenses. What did you think uh, watching all of that play out? Yeah, everybody knows the king of chaos is the king of spoilers. And I knew what it was from the start, boys. I knew it was just Usman trying to get out there, just get headlines, get some attention. And, and I knew, uh, you know, come shot was just uh, replying back into it, you know. So everybody knows, knows that come shot dodged me. And that was the fight that they were trying to make behind the scenes for six, eight, ten months. You know, we were trying to get this main event going. You know, he, the, he was hyped up. He was hyped up to the moon. And I was ready to end that hype. And he couldn't answer the challenge. He's unprofessional. He's a little dork. You know, he, you know, he's, he's literally a cum shot to the face. I mean, something happened on his lip. He got fucking, ugh. that thing is uh, ugly to, to look at, but I was going to knock those teeth out and end that hype real quick. But you know, he's unprofessional. He ran away from the division. So he's never fighting in 170 again. So that, I knew that fight when he was coming out, you know, who's been looking for headlines. He knows that fight's not going to happen because he's not going to 85. He's a 70 pounder. So you know, Usman probably should look at retirement. He looked so bad in that last Leon fight. He just looked so old, just so shot. Those knees, I guess, that everybody's talking about is actually coming to fruition. He just slowed down with time. You know, I've gotten better as time progressed. You know, I, I lived a clean le- lifestyle. You know, I was focused on my training and evolution as a fighter. So when I get that welterweight belt, people will see our trajectories in our co- in our careers. And, and uh, you know, I'm going to be keep making history like I always do every time I step in that at UFC octagon. Mm. I, like personally I was a little bit bummed out because I, I was curious about that fight just quickly and then uh, we'll get off this topic do you think uh, Hamza gets past Paula Costa <laughs> that's that's the new fight now that that's official dude just let's just see if they can get to the cage first those guys are some of the biggest jokers in the sport just complete fakes frauds you know like that's why you know someone like me every time the UFC no, the, the reason I'm in the good graces with the UFC because I'm a company man. I show up every time. I'm professional. Look at it. They call me on two days notice for London to be a backup fighter. I'm I'm going out there. I'm cutting six, 18 pounds and making weight on two days notice, ready to fill in and win the welterweight title. And, you know, because I'm a company man. I show up. I never pull out of fights, show up to every fight. So, you know, I'm the biggest, you know, ultimate company man and reliable guy, you know, someone that the, the company can truly count on. I always show up, bring the biggest and best business and that's why this fight needs to be on the MSG card, because I doubt Johnny even makes it to the cage. But if he does, then even better. We'll just put on the biggest gate in the history of Madison Square Garden. Dude, I can't wait. Hopefully it uh, may, gets made official soon and we can start looking forward to it. By the way, before we wrap up, man, I saw you on Fox News previewing the Zuckerberg-Musk fight. And I know you're not really rating Mark here. So I got to ask, like, are you interested in uh, potentially helping Elon prepare for this fight if it does happen? Absolutely. Elon, you know, my, my line is always open to Elon. You know, if he wants to hit me up on Twitter, you know, he, you know, I'm in the messages we, you know, I'd love the training a lot. I think he has so much alpha qualities. The guy is just a straight alpha, you know, and he's fighting for freedom of speech, you know, and he doesn't want people suppressing our free speech like Mark Zuckerberg, ironically, a guy who's trying to copy and mimic him and steal his platform. So Cause that's all Zuckerberg does, guys. Everybody knows he's a cheat and he's a copycat. He stole Facebook from the Winklevoss twins. So if you guys knew your research, like you'd know that the Zuckerberg is not a good person. He's a thief. 
And, you know, I'd love to train Elon to put him in the six feet deep. Yeah, he's not a big fan of my spicy memes, and I don't appreciate that. So <laughs> give him hell, Colby. Give him hell. <laughs> yeah, he's censoring us on YouTube. Come on, man. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Um, all right, as we, as we let you go, man, what's the message to all the Colby Covington fans that have been eagerly, eagerly waiting, awaiting this announcement? for the last thousand years and can't wait to hopefully have this at, at MSG. They're going to need to do the press conference on pay-per-view. That's, that's going to yes. be the real highest gate a couple of oh, days yeah. before. And then there's the event itself. What's the message, oh. man? Oh, my message is, you know, for the people, this, this, this one's for the people, the people of America, all the freedom fighters out there, the Trumps, you know, first responders, most importantly, law enforcement, military, the people that I'm really inspired by and I look up to. Those are the role models to me. Those are the people that are celebrities in my eyes. So I'm going to be fighting for you and I'm going to bring you guys a spectacle. And you guys know I've been working hard in silence. I don't have to I don't have to go to the gym and take a picture every time I'm at the gym. You know, like I know, like people like to copy everything I do. But, you know, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. So I can tell you, boys, when we come back, it's going to be the biggest and grandest spectacle of the year. We're breaking all the rich history books. And, you know, you already know the lead up what I what I bring to the table. It's going to be exciting, entertaining. And I can't wait to get back in there. Love you, UFC. Love you, Hunter Campbell. Love you, Dana White. It's an honor to be in the UFC. And, and I'm going to be here for life. All right, guys, make sure to follow the man at Colby Cove MMA. Dude, we can't wait. To speak to you once this thing locked gets locked in history is made at msg and it looks like it's right around the corner for another epic colby covington fight thank you so much for joining us man it's a real honor and pleasure thanks boys have a good one